not idle, for through their work and through their reputation and influence. Still going back to Joseph of Arimathea. If Joseph was a nonentity, I don't think he would have had the courage to go to Pilate and say, give me the Egyptians. Yes, I know, interestingly, um, I think one of his professors in that nature had heard that the story of the, the, the crucifixion and resurrection crossed the four Gospels, and they got to see there are some common things. And the official of Joseph of Arimathea, I know they wrote Mark chapter 5, verse 27, and Mark chapter 6, verse 66. But if you look at the account of Mark in verse 15, Mark chapter 15, verse 43, let's see what they say about this Joseph. Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who himself waited for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate. This man was waiting. During that time of waiting for the kingdom of God, he was building influence. He was building wealth. And there are even, again, if you look at the fact that even during his waiting, Luke chapter 14 verse 15 refers to him as a good and a just man. So in his waiting, he was not just waiting for waiting sake. He was doing good. He was waiting out justice. And that is what allowed him to go forward. So that's another trait of those who wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord, another trait leave things in God's hands and they let go and let God take over. We also see that again in Matthew chapter 27 verse 60. The latter part of verse 60 says, after they have rolled a large stone 
again to the door of the tomb and departed. They left. They knew that whatever was going to happen, they were, they were not going to resurrect him yet. So they did what they had to do and they departed. That means they let, they let God take over of the situation. So those who wait upon him leave things in his hands. They let go and let get God take over. Another trait of those who wait upon the Lord. You know, this waiting of the process. Yes, we wait. But when the instruction comes, they act quickly once they receive God's instruction. And one of the reasons why they're able to act quickly when they receive God's instruction is that when they have renewed strength, you know, of course, we are, we are going to get to that Bible verse that they that wait upon the Lord, you know, they shall renew their strength. It's time to act. Sometimes you might be too tired. But because they have waited, there was strength. And when the instruction came, they acted upon it quickly. And we can see that even when it was risen from the time, like Matthew 28, I'll just zero in to verse 5. Matthew 28 says, but the angel answered and said to the women, or let me just jump to verse 7. Um, it says, and the in, uh, verse 7, Matthew 27 says, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. They waited. The next morning, the instruction was go quickly. What happened in verse 8? So they went out quickly. And why were they able to do that? Because their strength has been renewed during the time of waiting. And they even ran even to give the disciples the word they received from the angel. Another trait of those who wait upon the Lord is that they continue to use their resources to honor the Lord while they wait. We are still looking at from that crucifixion to um, his resurrection. They continue to use their resources to honor the Lord while they wait. If you go back to this story again, if you now look at Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, Verse 1 says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, the mother of Jesus, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. If you look at another account in Luke chapter 23, verse 50, uh, 56 says, they, Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. The account in John chapter 19, verse 39 says, And Nicodemus, who at first came by Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of ma and ilos, about a hundred pounds. So this means that even though they were waiting, in their period of waiting, they, I'm sure this, they said they bought spices. So it didn't come free. They used their resources to honor the Lord. Because there are some times where it looks like we are waiting and things have not come the way we want and we just want to shut off everything. But no, this was not the case of these people. They used their resources while they were waiting even to honor the Lord. Another trait of those who wait upon the Lord is that they rest in God's promises and timing. They rest in his promises and timing. Between the time Jesus was crucified and the time he resurrected, if we zero in on Luke chapter 23, verse 56. Luke 23, verse 56. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. It didn't make sense that, oh, what would they be doing at this point in time? They were, they, but what did they do? They rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. So if we wait, if we say we are waiting upon the Lord, we should be able to rest in his promises and his timing. His promises and his timing. So we can see some of those traits of those who wait upon the Lord there. So now that we, we, we are going to use those six points now and expand on that a bit because that is from the re story from resurrection to, you know, to the time Jesus, so from crucifixion to resurrection. So going back to that first point now, we're talking about the fact that those who wait upon the Lord don't take shortcuts. They follow due process. Like I mentioned earlier, Joseph or Amaita went to Pilate. That was due process. Now, even in our lives, I'm sure majority of us have, have had to fly at one point in time or the other. If the pilot said it's not yet time to go because of turbulence or, or bad weather and all that, you just have to wait. There's nothing you can do about that. 
the pilot should not say, oh, even though there's a trouble, there's the weather is bad and very bad, I'll just go ahead and go. Even those of you on the plane will say, ah, no. Because that is the due process. And as we don't take short course, as we follow due process, it helps us to avoid pitfalls and regrets. When we are taking shortcuts, there's a high possibility that later there might be some regret alongside with it. Now, in the process of this, you know, I'm, I'm sure we, I also pray this prayer, you know, we want God to bypass protocols for us. Right? There's a, it's a prayer I also pray myself that in certain situations I don't want to go through all, every, all, all, all the loops, hoops to get some things done. But if protocols need to be bypassed, it is God that decides, not us. Is the one that will decide on, on locations where he wants protocols to be um, bypassed. And you know, this taking shortcuts, I remember we, one of the statements that have stuck with me in recent years was there was a conference, I can't remember the name, um, where the name of the pastor is Pastor J.K. Quilly. He uh, used to have a program in Nigeria then on TV. And they invited him to a conference day, um, during the pandemic. And he said something in this line because, you know, in this world we live in now, nobody wants to wait. We just want to take shortcuts and get rich, and get this, and get that, you know, and all of that. And, and you know, there's a popular phrase that came out that he now countered. And he said, uh, a lot of people are now beginning to say, fake it till you make it. Just fake it. You can fake, 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 you know, and, and that shortcuts. And he made a very profound statement there. He said, if you fake it till you make it, what you make will be fake. Does that make sense? So that means that we should be careful of the short course we are taking because that can go on to affect one later. And that's why even Proverbs 13 verse 11 corroborates that. Proverbs 13 11 says, wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. But he who gathers by labor will increase. That is the assurance we have. So let's be careful of shortcuts. Let us follow due process that shows that we are waiting upon him. We also mentioned the fact that Joseph of Arimathea was not just idle while he was waiting for the kingdom to be manifested. He was, bu- he, was bu- he was working. He was building reputation. He was building influence. And that's why he was able to go to a pilot to request for his body. And if you look at Proverbs, sorry, Psalms 37 verse 34. Psalm 37 verse 34 says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt you and inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Keep his way. Let's keep waiting. Let's see. That keeping is a, is a verb. You are doing something. So waiting does not mean we are idle. We are still doing something. And this particular Bible verse, you know, a particular pastor read the living Bible version of it several years ago. In fact, the man just uh, went to be with the Lord recently, Dr. Charles Stanley. And when he read this particular interpretation of the Bible, it has stuck with me for a long time. And it's something I reference every now and then. And that is the Living Bible version of Psalm 37, verse 34. In fact, I still reference it on my LinkedIn profile earlier this week. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway. And in due season... He will honor you with every blessing. So let's wait upon him. Let's keep traveling steadily. Steadily, steadily. Not idle, but walking. And in due season, by his timing, the assurance is that he will honor us with every blessing. We said earlier that they leave things in God's hands. They let go and let God take over. They departed the tomb. They, were, they, they didn't have any business there anymore. Once they have finish, you know, putting in our room the stone. So waiting, like we just mentioned, in, uh, we sang in the song, we have a dependable God. So this west waiting tests our dependence on God and how much we trust in him. Psalm 33 verse 20 to 21 says, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. We are heart shall rejoice in the cause we have trusted in his holy name. We mentioned earlier the fact that wait, when you wait upon the Lord and your strength is renewed, when he gives you an instruction, because you have rest, because you, are, you have re- you've gotten strength, you have the ability to act on that instruction fast. 
That's why I said they acted quickly. The angel told them, go and tell the disciples what quickly. And what did the Bible say in the next verse? They went quickly. Now, they are not, the advantage of that is the fact that, you know, like I said, if you are the kind of person that is always used to being hasty in making decisions and not waiting upon the Lord, what will happen is that you are going to become worn out as a result of the previous bad actions you've taken. But when you are waiting upon him, then it means that you're on the right path, then you have the strength to act quickly. And while I was writing this down, I actually came up with a counter argument. And I now tried to answer my question myself. And that's the fact that, you know, in this world we live in, you know, we just experienced it just now, when the children were about to sing. It got to a point in time that all of us were impatient. Right? We're like, I can't share What's happening? You know, let's, let's let the song die, but I look at what's happening. We want things to happen, you know, on the spot, on the go. You know, and one of the statements that I also say regularly is, we should strike while the iron is hot. Right? Strike while the iron is hot. But you have to realize that, and we're talking about acting quickly on God's instruction. Because sometimes it's like, okay, you are telling me that I should wait. But I need to strike while the iron is hot. But I just did a quick, you know, research on how this blacksmithing process works. And I realized that, you know, if you say you're going to strike while the iron is hot, it will still take time before the iron gets hot, before you can strike it. You can't, the blacksmith will not just go to a shop um, at 10 o'clock, and at 10.01, he's already striking the iron while it's hot. No, there's going to be some time. I even realized that depending on the metal, that will determine how high the temperature will be. So metals, yes, after a couple of seconds or minutes, it becomes hot, you can now start forging. Some, it will take a longer time. So even as we are waiting upon him, it doesn't mean that we should just make a decision just because we want to strike while the iron is hot. We need to ask ourselves, is the iron hot yet? What is the temperature? Is it time to move yet before we make that decision? And I came up with, you know, like I was saying here, I came up with another counter argument to myself. But this waiting, waiting, waiting of the thing, I also pray for divine speed now. I want speed. I want speed. I want action. But so why are you not telling me? I'm asking myself this question, you know, like I, I want speed, but I'm also being told to wait. Then the Lord answered me this way that, in most cases, there is a time of waiting before a time of speed. In most cases. And I can corroborate that even from the story of Elijah and Joseph. If you look at the story of Elijah, for example, in 1 Kings chapter 18. If you look at verse, um, I'll just say, look at verse 44. 1 Kings 18, 44. Then it came to pass the seventh time. You man was praying, praying, praying. No answer. Praying, no answer. There was a waiting period before, in verse 46, when it was said, then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So before he was able to have divine speed to run ahead of, 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 of Ahab to Jezreel, there was a time when he also waited in prayer and he was praying, waiting, praying, waiting. That's one. A good example is that of Joseph. Joseph is an example that I also pray about divine speed. From one second, from one, within a space of several minutes or hours, he was from, from a prisoner to a, a prince, you know. But we also know that, that, yes, that was speed at that particular instant. But there was a time of waiting before that happened. If, if you look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 2, Genesis 37, verse 2, this is the history of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. Note that. Jacob being 17, Joseph, sorry, being 17 years old. And of course, in verse 23, he was stripped, you know, of, uh, of his tunic, and of course, he was sold into slavery. That's Genesis 37, 2 and 23. Before Genesis 41, 46, Joseph was, now that's Genesis 41, 46, Joseph was 36 years old. Before he stood, 30 years old, sorry. T Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And of course, we don't all know what happened. So before um, Joseph got that divine speed to move from prisoner to prince, there was a waiting period of 13 years. So that's why, that was just the um, answer the Lord gave me. Like, yes, I want speed. I am not going to give you speed. But there's usually a waiting period before that moment of speed. Just going back to the airplane example too, right? Before the, the airplane goes at a very fast speed, there's a waiting period at the tarmac. So as much as, yes, this speed that we want, it also comes with some form of waiting before that speed can come. We also mentioned the fact that they, that they, when you are waiting, they use their resources, the spices, 
the alloys, you know, to anoint. They were using, wanted to use that to anoint Jesus' body. So while we are waiting, based on what we learned from those women in that story, we can still be a blessing and help to others. Because there are some times when it looks like we are prayed, we, are, we want something so badly, and it's not coming, and we just shut everybody off. No. While we are waiting, we can still be a source of, we can still use our resources to honor the Lord and be a blessing and help to others. And this is something great that the Philippian church did in Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Of course, we all know verse 19. My God shall supply your need according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But verse 18, indeed I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to the God. Uh, the reason why I wanted to use that word, that's aroma. Remember the women during from that um, crucifixion to resurrection time, they were look, they were getting spices and aromas. And in this case too, as we give, as we use our resources to bless His kingdom, ha, there's a, it's an acceptable sacrifice, and it will lead to many more things even after the period of waiting is over. And um, the, when you wait, we already mentioned also this when we learned from that that they tr rested. In God's promises and timing. They waited on the Sabbath. They did nothing. They were waiting because they re knew that, yes, his timing was right. In his eyes, in his time, it will make all things right. And that is why while waiting, this is very important. And I'm going to share a quick special, uh, personal story of, of, about this. The, as much as you and I rest in God's promises and timing, let us also make sure that we respect and show understanding to the waiting of others. Because sometimes it's easy for us to say, I trust God that, okay, in, in due time, God will bless me. But sometimes unconsciously, we are not patient or we are not respectful or understanding of the timing of others when they are waiting upon the Lord concerning something. And I'll give a quick personal, personal story here. Um, because, um, you know, it was my, my sister in Nigeria several years ago, you know, she put a Facebook post and she was not married then. And, you know, all these Nigerian jokes. And people were like, ah, maybe I want to come and eat wedding jollof. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, well, of course, she was getting older. I can't remember how old she was there. And I also replied in the post. I said, yes, yeah, so I, as a brother-in-law, I want to come and eat uh, jollof. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. And I just said it that way. My sister now had to send me a private message. And she said, bro, I don't like what you typed. Because she was waiting to get married. You know, I was, I, I was not even married there myself too. You know, but it, it, what came out for, from, the, for, for, from me for that was the fact that let us be respectful of the waiting of others too. We need to be careful of the things we say. Yeah, sometimes, I, and I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes we say some things, you know, I, we don't know that we are putting pressure on the people that are waiting. So let us be careful of that. If you know that God will do the right, the, the things in your own time, then you also should believe that God will do that thing in all other people's time and not indirectly or directly put pressure on them. And may God help us in Jesus' name. And this waiting upon the Lord is not a one-time event. We have to wait, receive, take instruction, act, wait, receive, take instruction, act. You know, it has to be a continuous one. And you can see that even in the case of the apostles. Because I may not be able to read all of them, but Acts chapter 1 verse 4. What was what they were being told in the in the middle part said, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which is said you have heard from me, in Acts chapter two verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. In Acts chapter four verse thirty one, again, like I said, this waiting is not a one time thing; it's a continuous thing. And when Acts chapter four verse thirty one, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Again in Acts chapter 13 verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy. And with the Holy Spirit. So we can see in that instant. It's very important that those that wait upon the Lord. Don't just wait as a one time event. They wait. They receive. They act. They wait again. So that is very important for us for, to note as we see even in the case of the disciples there. 
And what are some of the things we enjoy as we wait upon him? God goes ahead and makes things easier for us. God goes ahead and what does he do? He makes things easier for us. A, a classic example we can see was when the stone was going to be rolled away. If you look at um, that particular version, you know, they got to a point in time where the woman was like, oh, who is going to roll the stone away? But they were waiting. And because they waited, the stone was already rolled away before they got to the tomb. So when we wait upon the Lord, God goes ahead and makes things easier for us. When we wait upon the Lord, just like Joseph of Arimathea did, God favor backs us up. He was waiting, and when it was time for him to meet with Joseph, uh, with Pilate, God granted him favor, and he got the body of Jesus. And when we wait upon the Lord, another important thing that happened is that God will bring along other people to encourage and to support us in our waiting. God will bring other people to support us even in our waiting. Because even if you look at, because of time, I may not be able to quickly get to that, but there was a point in time, even in the Bible that, uh, verse that we read, it got to a point in time where they mentioned about Mary and Mary Magdalene. But in the latter part, what happened is that they say Mary, Magdalene, the Magdalene, and other women followed them to the tomb. So in the period of waiting, God brings about other people that can help us in our, meet, in our waiting upon him. So from all of this, you know, one of the key takeaways I want us to see from what we have studied so far and the, what we should act upon based on what we have learned is the fact that let's be careful not to give in to internal or external pressure to act when God has not spoken. Let's not give in to internal or external pressure to act fast when God has not spoken or when God has not given direction. And I think our daddy in law referenced this when we were um, earlier in the year when we were talking about planning. There was a quote by Abraham Lincoln which says, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. So there are six hours to chop the tree, but he's spending four hours to sharpen the axe. That is a time of waiting and preparation. And um, I can say that in the case of David, too. You know, if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Now, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. And verse seven, the latter part of verse 7 says, shall I pursue this truth? That is a sign of waiting. Shall I overtake? And of course, when he got instruction in verse 9, so David went. So despite the pressure that was being put upon him, David still said, shall I pursue? So let's be careful of such pressure. And when it comes to this waiting upon the Lord, we should not predetermine our actions while waiting. If you are saying, God, to show me the way, but you already have the way in mind, then that's a waste of time. We are not supposed to predetermine our actions while we are waiting. A good example is the case of Samuel. You know, when he was about to anoint the next king. He says, surely the Lord has anointed this before him. That's First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. But of course, they were not chosen. And up until verse 11, he now says, send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes. We will not sit down means we will wait till he comes. So he was not going to take any action based on any predetermined notion. While waiting, just we've mentioned this a couple of times already. Don't compare the timing of your answered prayers to that of others. Don't compare the timing. The fact that God has answered brother A does not mean that he's going to answer brother B immediately. We might be in the same neighborhood, but we have different addresses. So let's be careful of that, that we should be careful of comparing the timing of the answers of our prayers to that of others. Let's just wait on him, knowing fully well that it will do and perfect everything in its due time. Another thing we need to be careful of, the fact that the fact that we wait upon him and he gives us direction does not mean that there will be no challenges. Even after he has given you the right direction, he has given you the right instruction, there may still be challenges after receiving direction. But guess what? Because you have waited, you have received strength, 
So when the challenge comes, even after you follow the instruction, there is strength to pull through that challenge. And um, I like the way um, a particular version of um, puts this. We all know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31. I just want to read the message translation because another thing about this waiting is that we think we waste time when we wait upon the Lord. No way. No time is wasted when you wait upon the Lord. We rest assured that no time is ever wasted when you wait upon the Lord. You know, a, a minister just re released a new song, a Minister Johnson Yekon, about I will stay. You know, it's a song about waiting. And it says, I am not losing anything. You are not wasting my time. No time is wasted. And that's why Isaiah 40 verse 31, I like the way the message puts that latter part. They run and they don't get tired. They walk and they don't lag behind. You're waiting, be rest assured that as you wait upon him, you cannot lag behind. No, he's preparing you for something great. And you might say, well, I don't need to wait, I'm fine. But it seems, be careful because you need to ask ourselves that question. We might be able to get by without waiting in certain situations, but do we have God's best? If you want God's best, then we must wait upon him. If you and I want God's best in every area of our lives, then we need to wait on him for his perfect will to be done, not his permissive will. His perfect will needs to be done, and when we wait, then we are able to enjoy all those great and mighty benefits. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So I, I plead with you today. You know, we live in an instant generation, in a generation where we want everything now and speedily. But as we can see in so all the examples that we have given so far, there's a time of waiting. If I also have my way, I want everything answered now. Now, now. But that is not the reality. That is just the, the, the truth of the matter. There's, and like I said, when we wait upon him, then our strength can be renewed. Then whatever comes our way, we avoid peace force. We avoid regrets because we hasted to do certain things. That helps us a lot so that we can be what God has called us to be. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. But there's one thing that we cannot wait for. When there's a call to salvation, you shouldn't wait. You receive it immediately. Because beyond now is a time of salvation. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus.